Good evening, everybody. Hello, you hear me? teacher. Hi. Good evening, teacher. Hello. <laughs> Good to see you again. All right, let's begin. I'm going to share the screen with you. Just give me a second. There it is. All right, uh, we're going to start. And as usual, first thing we do is uh, call the names from the attendance list. Okay, so it's uh, the 27th. So when you hear your name, please let me know. I'm going to start right now. Uh, Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Present teacher. Welcome, Alejandro. Ana well, Filomena Mendoza. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Michelle García Selva. Andrea Michelle García Selva. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Hello, Byron. Cesar Alexander Ramirez Ramirez. Present teacher. Welcome. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. I'm here. Welcome. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejía. Present. Welcome. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Javier Ernesto Lucero Escobar. Present. Hello. Uh, Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortés. Present teacher. Welcome. José Arturo Ramírez Bernal. Presente. Hello. José Eraibín Enríquez. Here, teacher. Welcome. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Present. Welcome. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Present teacher. Welcome. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Noemí Alicia Estrada Palacios. I'm here, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Um, I have a question, Noemi. Is your name Noemi Alicia Estrada Palacios or Noemi Alicia Estrada de Valle? Noemi Alicia Estrada Palacios de Valle. It's only ah. Noemi Alicia Estrada de Valle. Okay, okay. So you kept both. Okay, okay both, both last names. Okay, I understand. Okay. Thanks. All right. Uh, Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present teacher. Welcome. Janet Yanira Rodríguez Andres. Janet Yanira Rodríguez Andres. Okay. Uh, Ana Filomena Mendoza. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Michelle García Selva. Andrea Michelle García Selva. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Good evening, teacher. Present. Good evening. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Iris Regina Hernández Cuella. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. I'm here. Okay, welcome. 
Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Janet Yanira Rodríguez Andrés. Janet Yanira Rodríguez Andrés. Okay, we have two chat entries here. Madeline says good evening. Hello, Madeline. <laughs> okay, I see uh, Nadia Isolina Rodríguez. Present teacher. Hello, hello, welcome. Okay, all right. Let's do this. We're going to begin now. Everybody, welcome. This is Advanced English 2, and that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service once again. This is session number three, and today, September the 27th of 2023. So, everybody, welcome. Welcome once again. So, what are we going to do? Well, we have a lot to do. Okay, we're a little bit uh, behind schedule now, so um, we need to catch up. So, um, let's do this. Okay, so uh, you have what's appropriate. This is section 1.4 from the platform. You can see it here. Okay, ah, they told me, well, you probably have checked it on the group, but they say that the problem in exercise 1.2 has been solved, apparently, okay? So, um, I don't know if you have checked, okay? Yeah, yes, it works correct. now, it works now, okay, yeah, okay. So, thank you for pointing that out, okay? Um, it's been corrected, so thank you very much. Now, we're going to do uh, 1.4, so you can see it here. Uh, there's a video, okay, with Miss with uh, Miss Jessica explaining uh, the whole thing. I want you to watch the video, please, if you haven't already. And um, it's pretty much the same we're going to do here. So, what's appropriate? Are these words and phrases positive, negative, or neutral? Okay, so some of them have a positive connotation, a negative connotation, and some of them carry a neutral connotation, meaning it's not necessarily bad, but not good either. I mean. It, it depends on the circum circumstances. So what about the first one? You have a compliment. Uh, what, what would you say? Is this positive, negative, or neutral? If you want to participate, just raise your hand. What's a compliment? Okay. What do you think? Bon appetit, Francisco. <laughs> okay. So. Um, <laughs> all right. Hey, what about this, Francisco? Number one, a compliment. Will that be positive, negative, or neutral? Um, you kiss people, you meet uh, the chef. Yes. I'm sorry? Um uh -huh. number one, a compliment. Okay. <laughs> um normal in <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh okay. it's, uh a property. It's, it's normal uh, in the in the girl girl. Take okay. This. Uh no? um Okay. Where are we? Sorry. <laughs> I got confused. <laughs> no, I mean, there's, there's the screen I'm sharing right now. Okay, I believe. Can everybody see the screen, which is like, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the first one, you have a compliment. Is this something positive? Is it negative? Or does it carry neutral meaning? Uh, let's see what Alejandro has to say. For me, it's, uh, it's, it's possible, teacher. It's uh, positive. Okay. It yes, is positive. positive. Yeah, it's, it's totally positive. A compliment is something nice that you say to a person. Say, for example, hey, I like your shirt, okay? Or you say, hey, congratulations on, on graduating, okay? So those things are compliments, okay? Nice things that you say to people, okay? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Daisy, what about number two, an insult? And then Noemi, you go for the third one. So Daisy? I think uh, negative. Yeah, absolutely, right? An insult is negative, that's for sure, okay? An, an insult is the opposite of a compliment, okay? When you compliment someone, you say something nice about that person. When you insult a person, you say something that is definitely not nice about the person. It's 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 offensive. So, yeah, that's correct. Uh, Noemi Alicia, number three, uh, you have the word um, uh, appropriate. Uh, positive. Yeah, this is positive. When something is appropriate, it is positive. Okay, appropriate behavior is 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 um, uh, normal behavior in specific situations. Okay, an appropriate comment is a comment that that fits the situation. So yeah, it's something positive. Byron Rafael, number four, bad form. It's negative. It is negative. Yeah, that's correct. Bad form, bad bad behavior, bad manners. Okay, that's the meaning of that. Bad form. It's uh, a bit informal, but yeah, that's how it is. That's correct. Okay, bad form, bad behavior, or bad manners. Uh, Cesar Alexander Ramirez. Ramirez. Inappropriate. It's yeah, it's definitely negative, right? It's the opposite of appropriate. Something inappropriate, you know, 
okay? Uh, it's like, for example, when you ask a person, when you meet a person, hey, and, 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 and how much do you earn, right? I mean, that's an appropriate question, right? You don't ask that question. You go like, hey, wait, wait, <laughs> okay? So it's negative. Jenny Elizabeth, what about number six, normal? Uh, I think it's neutral. Oh, neutral, okay. Yeah, it's neutral. I mean, normal is neutral. Some people may argue it's also positive, okay? To be normal is positive, but uh, it's also neutral, okay? Very good, thank you, Jenny. Okay, what about number seven? Offensive. About number seven, offensive. Who wants to try? Um, remember, if you're not participating, please deactivate your microphone. Okay, uh, Maritza. For me, it's number seven is uh, negative. Offensive, it's negative. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, something that's offensive is, well, insults are offensive, of course, so you don't do it. That's offensive. Okay, number eight. Uh, thank you, Maritza. Uh, number eight, polite. What about polite? Is it positive, negative, or does it carry a neutral meaning or connotation? Who wants to participate? Noemi Alicia. Positive. It is positive. Yeah, absolutely. Being polite is positive. Okay, when you say please and thank you. Okay, absolutely. And also when you speak in uh, in a way that um, uh, when you speak in indirect questions, it's that's also po uh, polite. Number nine. Then you have rude. How about rude? How about rude? Okay, uh, Miss Romero. It's a negative. Yeah, it's definitely a negative thing. Okay, when when you're rude, you're being impolite. Okay, definitely. Okay, thank you, uh, Miss Romero, Alejandro Quintanilla. What about number ten? Strange, like the doctor. No, strange. What is that? It's neutral, maybe. Neutral, maybe. Okay. Yes. Uh, we can say maybe negative uh, to some people, negative to some people, neutral. Okay. Some people okay. find that what is strange is, is kind of disturbing to them. Okay. So it could be negative or it could be neutral. Okay. Totally. Thank you, Alejandro. Uh, Nadia. Okay. Typical. How about typical? Is neutral. Neutral. Or, or yeah, totally neutral. Yeah, to totally neutral. Typical is, is neutral. Okay, it's uh, what repeats most often. Okay, it's typical. So yeah, thank you very much. What about unusual? How about unusual? What do you think? Uh, Gabriela? Neutral. Neutral, okay, I'm taking attendance. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's mostly neutral. Something that's unusual is not typical. But again, typical is not positive. So the opposite of typical, which will be unusual, is also neutral. So yeah, absolutely. Very good. OK, nice. Everybody, thank you for your participation. We're going to do exercise B. Group work, how do you feel about these things? Discuss the situations using the words and phrases above. You can use these words, a compliment, insult, appropriate, bad form, inappropriate, normal, offensive, polite, rude, strange, strange, sorry, typical, and unusual. We have a chat entry here. Uh, <laughs> Francisco is apologizing about, yeah, but uh, don't worry. Okay, uh, the mangoniana was distracting you. I understand, okay, no problem. So, well, um, let's let's do this, okay. Uh, group work, how do you feel about these things? Use the words, use the vocabulary we just um, reviewed right now. So, you kiss people you meet on the cheek. Okay, so this is something, right? Salvadorans, we do this. Okay, sometimes, okay, when Miss Romero says, no, 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 I can see her shaking her face, her face. So, uh, depends, okay, on the person. I, I don't like to do this personally, but we, as Salvadorians, do this often. Mostly, okay, when you meet, when a boy meets a girl, a man meets a woman, or when two ladies meet, that also happens. Or when they're friends, okay, they, they sometimes kiss on the, on the cheek. But never two men. Okay, that's that's not typical in our society. It's, it's usually man and woman or two women. Okay, but not two men. Okay, uh, so how do you feel about the situation? Okay, Miss Romero. Okay, now I I think you want to participate. Okay, so how do you feel about this situation? Okay, I I see that it may be typical, 
typical. Yeah, what you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but between girls. And personally? But personally, I don't like the people kiss me in the no. cheek. Uh -huh. and they no, no, no. At all. No, no, okay. Not on the cheek or anywhere else. Okay, so <laughs> that's the thing. Now, yeah, I have the same opinion. Okay. Also, because it's kind of weird, you know, when you, uh, this is what I call a, a, a social kiss. You know what a social kiss is? It's like when, when, when you meet someone and they, and I'm going to do this, okay, they kiss, but that's impossible. Two people cannot kiss at the same time on the cheek. It's impossible. You just, you just, you know, touch your cheek against the cheek of the other person and you kiss the air and you go know, like, you do that. Okay. But you're kissing the air. You're not really kissing the other person. It's physically impossible for two people to kiss on the cheek simultaneously. So it's, it's weird. Okay. So basically what you do is just slap your cheek against someone else's. Okay. Kind of strange, but yeah, it's, it's normal. You can see it here. Just look at this girl. She's not really kissing her, her cheek. She's kissing the air. Okay. Some unknown space in front of her so anyway thank you what about number two you and your classmates interrupt the teacher how do you feel about that okay thank you for not doing this uh but uh you and your classmates interrupt the teacher how would you feel about this kind of situation if you want to participate please raise your hand i, I would like to know your opinions or maybe i mean this is probably not something that you do but you've been you've been to classes before right i mean You've been to school, you've been to universities, or you have taken courses at work. Sometimes you take uh, workshops and, and things. And sometimes you meet uh, people with disruptive behavior, right? And um, uh, how do you feel about that? How do you feel when, when you see people, you know, uh, interrupting the teacher or, or the person in front of them, you know, speaking? How do you feel about that? What, what would you say in this kind of situation? How would you um, describe that? Do I have any volunteers? Okay, Alejandro and then Nadia. I don't know if my opinion is correct, but uh, personally, yes, but personally, I I hate I hate uh -huh. this action because uh, when when someone is uh, explaining uh, uh, something, mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion, we have to to left that this person uh, finished the idea. Mm -hmm. So when you interrupt uh, to a person, uh, uh, this person maybe never uh, will finish his or her idea. Okay. So yeah, for me, it's, it's very, very um, inappropriate, offensive, strange. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's, it's appropriate. It's <laughs> yes. offensive. Okay. Yes. Yes. Please. All right. Okay. Thank you, Alejandro. That's that's, My that's good. As as a teacher, I can tell you, yeah, it's it's weird. Okay, when people start like interrupting you all the time. Uh, in, in in my case, I mean, I'm I'm kind of used to it because I've been a teacher for like what 18 years now. It's been a long time, and and people often you know interrupt you. It's kind of normal to me at this point. But what I really don't like, and, and this is something that's a bit unusual in me, when, when I see that people are not necessarily paying attention to what I'm saying, I just go like, okay, whatever, okay? Uh, but when I see other people not paying attention to someone else who's speaking, I lose patience very quickly for some reason. When they do it to me, I'm like, oh, whatever. But when they do it to other people, I feel like it's, I really don't like it, okay? Uh, it should probably be the other way around, but that's the way it is in my case. So yeah, uh, thank you, Alejandro. Nadia, you get the next one. You stand very close to people when you talk to them. Okay, so how do you feel when 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 a person, for example, they want to ask you something, but they don't keep a distance of say like of uh, two meters or a meter and a half, but no, they they stand like really close to you. Okay, and and then you go like, oh whoa whoa. How do you feel about this kind of situation, uh, Nadia? Um, it depends. In, in uh -huh. Usually it's uh, offensive. In my opinion, it's offensive mm -hmm. in many, many cases. Mm -hmm. It's offensive. It's but offensive. Mm -hmm. it's oh. offensive. Okay, it, it is offensive. I, I find it, I find it weird and inappropriate. I mean, sometimes, sometimes people do that. 
And um, it's been a very long time since I've taught a group of, of students in a, in a big classroom, years. I mean, the pandemic changed everything. But um, I have had cases of students who sometimes, well, you know, regularly students just raise their hands, they ask questions. Some people want to be more personal, they stand up and they come up to you. But sometimes they stand very close to you, feel like they're going to kiss you or something. You go, oh, relax. Okay. So when that happens, it's really awkward. Okay. You go like, uh, yeah, how, how can I help Maybe you? They, okay. they, they like you. <laughs> yeah, probably. They want to steal a kiss from me. Yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so, but but yeah, that, that's got a happens. crush on you. Yeah, maybe. Well, I remember I once I once had a um a student who did that, and 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 it was on top of being awkward, it was it was uncomfortable because I it was in the morning, and I don't think the guy brushed his teeth before the class. So it was a guy who got like really close to you and go like, "Hey, hi, how can I help you?" And the guy like started talking and okay, but of course you cannot say anything. You go like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay all right uh that's why you you probably have to keep your distance i guess like a meter and a half is 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 probably okay a meter a meter and a half will be fine okay if you're close friends probably a bit closer but not that much okay um about uh number four you and your parents talk honestly and openly okay Let's talk about, you know, uh, a healthy, open relationship with your parents, okay? How would you describe or qualify a relationship like that, okay? Daisy says, when you talk to your partner, closer the better. Oh, yeah. Is your partner, your, your, your boyfriend, girlfriend, or husband or wife? Yeah, absolutely. The closer, the better. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Okay, so what about this, right? You and your parents talk honestly and openly, okay? How do you feel about this situation? Who wants to participate? Doing some speaking right now. So Arturo is having some uh, connection problems. Okay, but you are here, so I'm going to take your attendance. Thank you for letting me know. Ah, uh, yeah, I have already taken it. Okay. All right. Um, so what about number four? Uh, does anybody want to participate? If not, we're going to skip it and go to number five. Makes me think, uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, not volunteers, number four? Okay. What about number five? Your best friend calls you after 11 p.m. Okay, you're about to go to bed or you are already in bed, okay? And then your best friend your best friend calls you after 11. Um, how would you feel about this situation? How would you? Okay, Byron. And then Janita and then Nadia. Okay, keep your hands up, please, so that I won't forget. For me, teacher, I feel really angry when my best friend called me after 11 p.m. Okay. okay. <laughs> what if it's an emergency? Would you feel angry? No. no. I'm going to okay. fast. Okay. So mm -hmm. if, you will not you will not feel angry if it's an emergency. Okay. But if it's not an emergency and your best friend just wants to talk. Okay, then you'll get, you'll get angry. Yes, when mm -hmm. he's really sick or have an accident. Okay. Okay, then, okay. I'm going too fast. Okay, uh, okay. In the, if that's the case, then uh, you don't think it's inappropriate. Okay, it sounds good. Uh, Janita, do you want to participate uh, on the same statement or do you want to comment on number six? Number five, please. Number five. Please okay. Share. All right. So, how do you feel if your best friend calls you after eleven p.m.? Um, nowadays, teacher, I I don't like to answer calls. Mm -hmm. uh, only I call to my my mother by phone. Okay. Because she writes low. Okay. <laughs> and for me, it's better. A call by phone in normal call. Okay. But all my friends only by by WhatsApp chat okay. with or by WhatsApp, and for me is um, inappropriate that the people call me okay. because they don't they don't know if I I I am busy. Ah. Or in a meeting, so, so in I, other words, I don't like. 
I don't like to to respond, even my even my friends. So, in other words, you don't like it when people call you, no matter the time. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Anytime, anytime. I don't, okay. I do respond the calls. Okay, okay, everybody, you heard that. Don't call Yanira. She, <laughs> she, she won't, she won't answer the yeah, phone. Okay, you, you will. You will <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you sorry. Will, you will annoy her. Okay, so don't, don't, don't call her unless it's an emergency. Okay, if you want to communicate with her, send her a message. Okay, it's for my job, teacher. I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, you know something that I don't like: voice notes. On WhatsApp, I hate voice notes. Okay, I don't like them. This is when people send me a voice note. It's like, okay, you better do it like fast. Better do it brief. Okay, because when people send like a five-minute voice note, it's like so incredibly annoying that you have to hear and you go like, oh man, this is so long. Uh -huh. Okay, so yeah. It's a podcast. I, I, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a podcast. Absolutely. <laughs> No, okay, I don't want to hear a podcast. If you have something to tell me that is that long, call me instead, okay? Don't leave me a voice note. Anyway, yes. the good thing about voice notes on, on WhatsApp is that you can uh, go like, um, you can change the tempo of it and make them faster. You can hear them like at twice the speed of normal voice. And I usually do that, like, uh, okay, you're done. Anyway, thank you. What about number six? You start the conversation with a stranger on a bus or a, a subway. Okay, so. Debbie, okay, how about this one? How do you feel about the situation? I think it's a little bit unusual, mm -hmm. but uh, at the same time, it's like uh, interesting to know different mm -hmm. <laughs> different uh, people problems. Uh, okay. It happened for me. To me, it, it often happens. And oh really? I think it's yeah. It 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 is really interesting because I'm re I'm I think I'm really polite with people and mm -hmm. most of the time I love to listen. Okay, and you're a good listener. I think that I, I learned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, and I'm I think that I'm very good. Uh, I I I learn a lot. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so you like uh, small talk and you're a good listener. Okay, that's cool. Um, I'm I'm quite the opposite. I really don't like it when people talk to me on the bus. But of course, I am not rude to anybody. If somebody starts a conversation with me, I I go along with it and I and I and I you know uh, keep the conversation going. But particularly, I don't really like it when people start talking. I mean, when a stranger starts talking to me on the bus. Um, well, I. I don't take the bus much these days, honestly. Uh, but the thing is, um, uh, I have had like good experiences and bad experiences on this regard. Some people have had like nice and interesting conversations that, that I have enjoyed. And some other people have, uh, and this is like really bad because I remember once when a guy pretended to start a conversation with me and then like, uh, like two minutes into the conversation, he said like, okay, give me your phone. I was like, really? <laughs> The guy was robbing me, so I didn't know that. But but the guy started a conversation just to rob me. It was horrible. And I also remember another occasion when I was riding the bus. I was the only person on the bus. I remember the only person. They got to the next bus stop, and there was a guy there, got on the bus, and sat next to me for some reason. I mean, he could have chosen any of the other seats, but he decided to sit next to me. So I, I don't know. I, I didn't like it. I stood up and said, excuse me, <laughs> and I went to sit somewhere else. Anyway, um, that's it. Thank you for participating. Okay, that's really cool. We're going to continue now. Uh, party talk. We're going to do the listen exercise 1.5. Okay, listen to three conversations of the party. Who is speaking in each one? Okay, so I'm going to play it. And the first one, it's a mother and, and her son, a teacher and her student, a woman and her son's friend. Conversation two, two young students, two older friends or two coworkers. And conversation three is uh, two cooks, two wives, or two classmates, okay? I'm going to play the track, and then I want you to tell me, okay, uh, who is speaking in each of them. Here we go. Listen to three conversations at a party. Can you hear that? Yes. I yes? yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who is speaking in each one? 
One. Hi, are you Pete? Yes, hello. I'm Liz Morton, Tom Morton's mother. Oh, right. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Morton. You too. So, are you enjoying the party? Yeah, it's great. This might be the last time I see some of these people for a long time, so I've been pretty busy trying to make sure I get a chance to talk to everyone. You know, it's strange to think that all you kids are graduating. Do you have any plans after graduation? Well, I've applied for a teaching job overseas. I guess I'll probably find out if I got the job or not next week. You're more adventurous than Tom. I can't believe he's going to take a job right here in town. But it's a good job, I guess. And of course I would miss him if he went far away. Yeah, I know. My mom doesn't want me to go far away either. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I think another friend of mine is leaving. Excuse me, Mrs. Morton. I need to say goodbye to him before he goes. Oh, sure. It was great to meet you, Pete. So, um, who's speaking in the first conversation? Rufino. Uh, I, For me, I think, I, let, see, let her see. A woman and her son's friend. That is correct. Very good. Thank you. Okay, uh, second conversation. Let's listen to it. Two. Hey, Jim. Great music. What group is it? I don't know. It's the radio. Maybe they'll say after it's over. Well, it's a good thing my wife isn't here, or she'd make me dance to it. You know, she loves that old-fashioned dancing. Yeah, I know. My wife's the same way. Myself, I haven't danced since my wedding day, and I intend to keep it that way. Yeah, I'm with you. Although I do like this old-fashioned dance music. The bands back in those days could really play. Not like today. It's all image now, you know? Oh, I don't know about that. It's just the styles changed, that's all. I mean, a lot of those pop stars are actually pretty talented. You really think so? Sure. Actually, I've been listening to this CD my grandson left behind at the house last Thanksgiving. It's some of that, what do you call it, that hip-hop music. You what? You've got to be kidding me. No, no. A lot of it isn't bad. I mean, at least the lyrics are about something, you know? Hmm, I don't know. No, try it. You'll see. Wait, wait, I'll put it on now. I'd rather go out dancing. Anyway, I should get going. I'll call you later. So, who's speaking in this case? They see. To all their friends. Okay, um, two older friends. Yeah, that's right. It's two older friends. Okay. All right. Uh, great. And uh, the third one. Uh, let's listen to it. Three. Mm, Jenny, this is delicious. I love stuffed grape leaves. Yeah, me too. It all tastes delicious. Do you think they made all this themselves? Or did they have it catered? Oh no, George is a great cook. Why would they cater it? Really? Oh yeah, George cooks? You didn't know that? Lynn's always saying that's half the reason she married him. Well, that is a good reason. Is she ever lucky? I wish my husband liked to cook. He completely avoids anything that has to do with the kitchen. You know, my husband's talking about signing up for an Italian cooking class on Saturdays. I hope he does it. Oh, I wonder if I could convince my husband to do that. I'd sure love being the taste tester for his recipes. Exactly what I was thinking. Well, I'll let you know when the class starts. Great, please do. In the meantime, I think I'll go mention it to him. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye. All right, so who's talking in this case, Nadia? It's, uh, in my opinion, it's a letter D, so two wives. Two wives, yeah, absolutely. Okay, two wives. Yeah, correct. Okay, very good. Now, um, we're going to listen again. I'm going to play the track again. What closing phrase is huge to end each conversation? I'm going to play it, the three conversations in a row, and after that, you'll tell me what 
uh, closing phrase was used to end each of the conversations. So here, here I go. I mean, in other words, the last phrase you hear in the conversation, that's the one that I want you to uh, write down. Second time. Listen to three conversations at a party. Who is speaking in each? I'm sorry? Excuse me, teacher. Yes. Uh, uh, what's meaning closing phrase? The, the last phrase, the final phrase, the, the final uh, sentence or the final thing that they said. The final sentence of, mm -hmm. of the com each, of each conversation. conversation. Exactly. Oh. Of each conversation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, here we go. One. One. Hi, are you Pete? Yes. Hello. I'm Liz Morton, Tom Morton's mother. Oh, right. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Morton. You too. So, are you enjoying the party? Yeah, it's great. This might be the last time I see some of these people for a long time, so I've been pretty busy trying to make sure I get a chance to talk to everyone. You know, it's strange to think that all you kids are graduating. Do you have any plans after graduation? Well, I've applied for a teaching job overseas. I guess I'll probably find out if I got the job or not next week. You're more adventurous than Tom. I can't believe he's going to take a job right here in town. But it's a good job, I guess. And of course I would miss him if he went far away. Yeah, I know. My mom doesn't want me to go far away either. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I think another friend of mine is leaving. Excuse me, Mrs. Morton. I need to say goodbye to him before he goes. Oh, sure. It was great to meet you, Pete. Two. Hey, Jim. Great music. What group is it? I don't know. It's the radio. Maybe they'll say after it's over. Well, it's a good thing my wife isn't here, or she'd make me dance to it. You know, she loves that old-fashioned dancing. Yeah, I know. My wife's the same way. Myself, I haven't danced since my wedding day, and I intend to keep it that way. Yeah, I'm with you. Although I do like this old-fashioned dance music. The bands back in those days could really play. Not like today. It's all image now, you know? Oh, I don't know about that. It's just the style's changed, that's all. I mean, a lot of those pop stars are actually pretty talented. You really think so? Sure. Actually, I've been listening to this CD my grandson left behind at the house last Thanksgiving. It's some of that, what do you call it, that hip-hop music. You what? You've got to be kidding me. No, no. A lot of it isn't bad. I mean, at least the lyrics are about something, you know? Hmm, I don't know. No, try it. You'll see. Wait, wait, I'll put it on now. I'd rather go out dancing. Anyway, I should get going. I'll call you later. Three. Mmm, Jenny. This is delicious. I love stuffed grape leaves. Yeah, me too. It all tastes delicious. Do you think they made all this themselves? Or did they have it catered? Oh no, George is a great cook. Why would they cater it? Really? Oh yeah, George cooks? You didn't know that? Lynn's always saying that's half the reason she married him. Well, that is a good reason. Is she ever lucky? I wish my husband liked to cook. He completely avoids anything that has to do with the kitchen. You know, my husband's talking about signing up for an Italian cooking class on Saturdays. I hope he does it. Oh, I wonder if I could convince my husband to do that. I'd sure love being the taste tester for his recipes. Exactly what I was thinking. Well, I'll let you know when the class starts. Great, please do. In the meantime, I think I'll go mention it to him. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. All right. Um, just a second. Just give me a second, please. All right. Um, here we go. Uh, number one, uh, what's the closing phrase used in conversation one? Daisy, then Rufino, then Jenny. And then Jose, if possible. So, 
Okay, and the first closing phrase is It's great to meet you. To meet you, Pete. Okay, yeah, very close. It was great to meet you, Pete. Okay, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much the idea. Thank you, Daisy. Uh, Rufino, the second one, do you have it? The, the second one says, anyway, I should get going. I call you later. Yeah, it's anyway, I should get going. I'll call you later. Thank you very much. And the last one, Jenny Elizabeth Santiana. Uh, I'll see you soon, maybe. <laughs> Okay, yeah, pretty much. Or okay. thank you soon. <laughs> kind of, kind of. Okay, we have the idea right there, but um, something, something's missing. Um, yes. uh, I believe Nadia wanted to participate. No? Yes, teacher, okay. in the number three, I mm -hmm. hear uh, talk to him, bye. Talk to him. Talk to him. Um, a little bit different, actually, but thank you. Uh, Maritza, what does she say at the end? Soon. Yes. Talk, talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Okay, yeah. They say talk to you soon and the other person says, okay, bye. All right. There you go. That's correct. Now, uh, this is the same exercise that you have in section 1.5. Okay, it's same thing. You have the answers right here, which is pretty much the same we just completed here. So uh, that's number three. Sorry, uh, exercise 1.5, uh, part one, and here's also part two, which is the same, right? You have to choose uh, the closing phrases for each conversation. So we just did it, you can do it at home. Now uh, we have this, the starting point for the next part, eavesdroppers, okay? So what is it? What is an eavesdropper, okay? So an eavesdropper is a person who um, secretly hears someone else's conversation. It's like you hear two people talking and, and you are nearby, okay? And uh, probably it's none of your business, but you uh, you start listening to what they say, right? It's not your conversation. You're not part of the conversation, but you start listening to what they're saying. So if you do that, you're an eavesdropper, okay? That's the meaning of that expression. An eavesdropper, again, is someone who listens, who secretly listens to uh, someone else's conversation, okay? So that's an eavesdropper. So I want you to take a look at this. Read each person's statement. What do you think they should do about each situation? I wish I hadn't heard that, okay? So what about the first one? Louise, uh, 23, Mexico City. Um, can I have a volunteer to read this paragraph here? The first uh, testimonial? Who can help me with this one, please? Nadia. Okay, Louise, uh, 23, Mexico City. Mm -hmm. On the bus to work, I hear my voice, my, my boss, my bosses, uh -huh. my boss voice behind me. I think he was talking to office manager on his cell phone. He was telling me her that it would be a bad day at work. He explaining that they were going to lay off an entire department. Yeah, that's that's horrible. Well, thank you, uh, Nadia. Debbie will help us with the second one. But before that, let's take a look at the first one. On the bus to work, I heard my boss's voice behind me, right? I think he was talking to the office manager on his cell phone. He was telling her that it will be a bad day at work. He explained that they were going to lay off my entire department, okay? Before we continue, do you have any questions about the vocabulary? Yes, teacher. What is the meaning of layoff? Uh, sorry. Um, who was talking? <laughs> Remember to raise your hands, otherwise I get confused. Okay, Jenny. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, teacher. No, no, uh, no, no. No, not you. Okay, it's always so... wrong. Okay. Uh, uh, what does it mean? Uh, the words uh, leg off in my lay off. instrument. Lay off in my entry. They're going to lay off my entire department. They're going to fire all the people in the department. It's a layoff. Mm -hmm. A dismissal. Okay. So when they say he explained that they were going to lay off, they were going to fire, okay, my entire department. In other words, he was going to be fired too. That's really bad news. Okay. So that's it. They lay off people. 
Okay, um, any other questions about the vocabulary? No more questions? Okay, Debbie, can you help me read the second one? Rebecca, 25, Vancouver. Okay. I overheard my roommate and her friend gossiping about me when I got home. I asked them what they were saying, but they claimed they hadn't been talking about me. I knew that wasn't true. I really hurt my feelings. It really hurt my feelings. Yeah. Thank you, Debbie. Rebecca says, I overheard. I overheard my roommate and her friend gossiping about me when I got home. They were like, shush, shush, shush. and you know, Rebecca, Rebecca was doing this and blah, 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 and Rebecca this and Rebecca that. So they were gossiping about me when I got home. I asked them what they were saying, but they claimed they hadn't been talking about me. They said like, no, 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 nothing about you. No, no, it, it's, it's in your mind, right? It's your imagination. Okay, I knew that wasn't true. It really hurt my feelings. Okay, so uh, do you have any questions about the vocabulary in the second testimonial right here? Any questions? Everything clear? Okay, then. Well, what about Hikari 19 from Nagoya in Japan? Rufino, please help me read it. Uh, Ikari 18, Nagoya. Mm -hmm. Last week, I overheard my little brother on his cell phone. He was warning his friend not to say anything. Mm -hmm. So I course, I course, of, I of listened. Course. Of course. Of course. Uh -huh. So of course, I listened. He said he was getting a terribly great in math this year. And he said it was a big secret too. In fact, my parents still don't know that through. Yeah, he carries says, thank you, you know, he carries says, last week I overheard my little brother on his cell phone. He was warning his friend not to say anything. He was like saying, don't you say anything. Don't you say anything, okay, this is a secret, okay. So, so of course I listened. He said he was getting a terrible grade in math this year, and he said it was a big secret too. In fact, my parents still don't know the truth. Do you have any questions about the vocabulary in the last conversation? Final conversation here? It's not a conversation, I'm sorry, in the last testimonial. It's not a conversation. What am I saying? Uh, Jose Raibin. Teacher, uh, well, when I used to, to, to talk, I you I I'm used to use just the word heard, but I don't know why they use overheard. Okay, when you overhear something, that means that um it's it's like eavesdropping. Okay, the difference. Okay, I'm going to put it here on. Okay, eavesdrop. Okay, so to eaves drop means to intentionally uh, listen to some other person's conversations. To overhear is to unintentionally, you know, listen to someone else's conversation. For example, imagine that you are on the bus. You're on the bus and, and, and the people next to you are having a conversation. The, not next to you, behind you are having a conversation. Two people are sitting behind you and they're having a conversation. You don't want to listen to them. But, I mean, you are just like a, about a meter away from them. So you hear everything they say. You don't want to listen to them, but you hear everything. That's when you are overhearing something. Okay. Um, you don't want to do it, but you're hearing it anyway because you have no option. To eavesdrop will be uh, to hear or to secretly listen to, okay, a conversation. In other words, when you pay attention to some a conversation, uh, you're not a part of, okay? So that's the meaning of that over here. Teacher, can you give me, can you give us an, an, an example. example using using that verb of over eavesdrop? Here. Eavesdrop. No, no, the first one, eavesdrop. eavesdrop. Okay, uh, I caught my... I don't know. I caught my little brother eavesdropping 
on our conversation last night. Okay. I called my little brother eavesdropping on our conversation last night. That means he was probably behind the door with his ear, you know, against the the wooden door, trying to listen to everything we were saying. So that's the meaning of eavesdrop. Okay, thank you, teacher. Okay, you're you're, you're welcome. Okay. Um all right, let's continue. Okay, I wish you hadn't heard that. It's 8.50 now, wow, okay. Okay, so let's continue. So this lesson objective, okay. Um, I, I have a chat entry here. Madeline says, teacher, would you help me please? I need help with exercise 1.8. Okay, we're gonna try to do it, but even if we don't have time today, we'll do it for sure tomorrow, okay? So no problem. We're gonna go over that, don't worry about that. Uh, so. By the end of this class, participants will understand the use of reported speech. Okay, reported speech is kind of like a pain in the neck sometimes, but uh, I'm gonna try to do it, or I'm gonna try to explain it the easiest possible way. So, reported speech. There is something that we call statement or direct speech, and then there's something that we call reported speech. How does that work? Take a good look at this. This is a statement, I'm going to zoom in, okay? Somebody tells you directly, somebody's talking to you and that person tells you it's a big secret. Okay, don't tell anybody, it's a big secret. Okay, so that's direct speech. It's something that a person told you, the exact words of that person. But then there is something that we use, which is called reporter speech. When you have the reporter speech, you use a reporter statement. And the reporter statement statement goes like this. Imagine that a friend told you, hey, listen, this don't tell anybody, please. This is a big secret. But then, of course, you told somebody else, okay? And then you have, he said that it was a big secret. This is a reporter statement. You are reporting what another person said, okay? He said that it was a big secret. This is just like, like, like Spanish, right? When a person tells you, es secreto, no le diga a nadie. Then you say, dijo que era secreto. Okay, so you are reporting what the other person said. That is reporter speech. Now, there is one thing that we do. There is a process. We have to change the verb tense when you are reporting something. And uh, you have to be very careful with this. Take a look at this. You have the first one. It's a big secret. They are using the verb be in present form. So when you report it, you have to use the verb be in past form. He said that it was a big secret. You don't say he said it is a big secret. No, you said he said it was a big secret. Okay. So you have to do this process. Okay. You have to change the verb tense when you're reporting a statement. We have the second example. Somebody tell, told you, I'm getting a terrible grade. I'm getting a terrible, terrible grade. Okay, so he said that he was getting a terrible grade. So present continuous changes to past continuous. Okay, I should probably write it here. It's for you to have it, and then I'm gonna send it to you via what's up. Okay, so uh, present to be changes to, well, Let's see, let me just uh, zoom out a little bit. This should be direct speech. This should be reported speech. Okay, so the present of B changes to the past of B. Okay, so M is R changes to was and where, all right? So uh, the second one, you have, I'm getting a terrible grade. He said that he was getting a terrible grade. So present continuous changes to past continuous. All right. Then you have this one. Okay. They got engaged. Okay. This is past simple. Report a statement. He said that they had gotten engaged. Past simple changes to past perfect. And sometimes it is not necessary to do this, okay? Very often when people are reporting the past tense, they keep the past tense. In other words, past simple can also remain past simple. Some people don't change it, okay? Sometimes when people are reporting what somebody said in past simple, they just use the past simple in the reported tense. Some people do it. But if you don't want to do it, you can also use past perfect. Like in this case, they got engaged. That's past simple. 
He said that they had gotten engaged. That's past perfect. Okay. Again, you can also say he said that they got engaged. People talk like that. No problem. So uh, they weren't talking about you. Okay. They weren't talking about you. So this is past continuous. Okay. Uh, they claim that they haven't been talking about me. Okay. That is past perfect continuous. They haven't been talking about me. So past continuous changes to past perfect continuous. Let's go for the next one. Uh, she's been absent since Tuesday. She's been. Okay. This is present perfect. Present perfect changes to past perfect. He said that she had been absent since Tuesday. Had been. That is past perfect. All right. Now, what about this one? We had never been there before. This is past perfect in the direct speech. What about the reporter speech? She said that they had never been there before. Past perfect doesn't change. Okay. Past perfect remains past perfect. Okay. One thing to remember, if you have past perfect in, in the reported speech, you use past perfect. I'm sorry, if you have past perfect in direct speech, you use past perfect in reported speech. All right. What about this one? I'll meet you at the cafe, right? This is modal would. Okay, modal will, I'm sorry. Modal will changes to modal would. Okay, he said that he would meet me at the cafe. That's how you do it. I believe that... Um, I, I I cannot show it here, but uh, I'm going to look for um, uh, a picture to send you via WhatsApp. Okay, I, I cannot display it here. Okay, there are certain reasons why I cannot show it in class, but I can send it to you via WhatsApp later on. Okay, so just to make this clearer. So yeah, that's the thing, right? There's direct speech. Uh, these are the tenses, and these are the tenses they change to when you are reporting the sentences. Okay, like this again. You have present and be. Present of B, I'm sorry, like when you say it's a big secret, it is a big secret, it changes to the past of B. He said that it was a big secret. Okay, and so on. What time is it? 8.57. Wow. Questions. Did you know about the layoffs? Okay, did you know? This is a question. And the question is in past simple. So let's take a look. Past simple changes to past perfect. Okay, let's see. I asked him if he had known about the layoffs, okay? I asked him if he had known about the layoffs. So as you can see here, it changed to past perfect. But one thing that you have to know is this, and this is extremely important. So everybody, please, please, please pay very close attention to what I'm about to say. When you are saying, uh, or when you are say uh, stating okay a question in direct speech you have to use the structure of a question this is the structure of a question in past simple you say did you know that's past simple question form did you know about the layoffs but what about this when you say i asked him if he had known about the layoffs if you pay close attention to this this is not the structure of a question for one simple reason this is not a question that's the reason if you notice, there is no question mark at the end. Therefore, you don't have to use uh, the structure of question. That's something that you have to be very careful with, okay? Direct speech, and you're asking a question, okay, use the structure of a question. But in uh, reported statements, okay, because you are not really asking a question, you are reporting a question, you don't have to use the structure of a question. You have to use the structure of an affirmative sentence. And if the question was negative, then the structure of a negative sentence. Uh, I believe somebody wanted to ask a question, uh, by the way. I think it was, uh, was it? I saw someone raising the hand. No? Alejandro, I believe. Was it Alejandro? Jose, no? Jose but, but I believe. Jose, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Jose, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Do you want to ask a question? No, no, teacher. I'm sorry. I forgot uh, to 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 lower your to hand. Bajar la mano. Low, lower know, your hand. Say. Okay, low, to lower my hand. Yeah. Lower your I hand. Sorry. Yeah, that it, it probably hurt by now. Okay, we're like, oh man. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, okay, so another example. What are you saying? 
are you saying? That's the structure of a question in present continuous. First, the auxiliary, then the subject, then the verb in ing form. But then if you report the question, you say, I asked them what they were saying. You don't say, I asked them what were they saying. That would be incorrect for one simple reason. This is not a question. You are reporting a question. This is a statement about a question, but not a question itself. Therefore, don't use question structure. You have to use the structure of a statement, the structure of an affirmative sentence. Okay, so be very careful with that. What about, it's nine. Okay, so let's just finish this and then uh, we can call it a day. And tomorrow we're going to solve the rest of exercises for this uh, uh, section, including, I believe Debbie had a question. No, was it Debbie, I think? Yeah, Debbie. No, it was Madeline, I'm sorry. Madeline was the one with the question. I'm sorry, Debbie, <laughs> I got confused. Okay, uh, we probably don't have time to, to, to solve that today, but we will do it tomorrow for sure. Okay, I promise. Now, commands, okay, imperatives. When a person tells you, don't say anything. Okay, it's a secret. Don't say anything. How do you report a command? You say, he warned his friend, or you can say, he told his friend, is also possible, not to say anything. You have to use a two-infinitive form. And as we studied yesterday, the negative form of a two-infinitive is not. Not to say anything. That's how you report a command. And finally, general truths. Okay, now what is a general truth? A general truth is something that never changes. Okay, like the laws of physics or the laws of the universe, you know, natural science and, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, that's a general truth. It's, those are not circumstantial. They're always true. For example, when you say the sun rises in the east. Okay, that's a fact. Okay, the sun rises in the east. So what is the reported general truth? She said that the sun rises in the east. So when you are reporting a general truth, when you are reporting a fact, especially if it's a scientific fact, don't change the verb. You don't have to change the verb tense. It remains the same. The sun rises in the, usually it's present simple because you use present simple for facts and, and truths. So the sun rises in the east, the reported statement is, she said that the sun rises in the east. You don't say, she said that the sun rose in the east. Um, that would not make sense, okay? If it's a general truth, if, especially if it's a scientific fact, you have to use uh, the same verb tense, which is usually present simple, okay? Uh, before we go, uh, do you have any questions about this? We're going to review this tomorrow and we're going to solve all the remaining exercises, I promise. But uh, for the time being, do you have any questions? No, teacher. No, okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, let, you let me just call attendance list one more time and then uh, we can call it a day. So, uh, wrong button. Okay. Ana Filomena Mendoza is Ana Filomena online. Good evening, teacher. Yes, I am. Hello, hello, yes. Ana. Welcome. Sorry. It's okay. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy is Ana I'm Yanira. Sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, there are two Yaniras, right? There's Janet Yanira and Ana Yanira. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. We got the right. Present last teacher. Name okay. Hello, yes. Andrea. Uh, thank you. It is Regina Hernandez Cuellar. It's here, teacher. Welcome. Ricardo Ernesto Ramirez Quijano. I'm here, teacher. Hello, Richard. Okay. Um, and Janet Yanira Rodriguez Andres. Janet Yanira Rodriguez Andres. Mm, apparently not. Okay, everybody, uh, thank you very much once again. And, and tomorrow we're going to solve the rest of the exercises. Take good care. Good night and uh, sleep well. Thank you, teacher. Good See night, tomorrow. everyone. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Have a Bye. nice night. Bye, guys. Goodbye.